Welcome to another GC Basic demonstration. This is part five for the 18FQ20 chip family. Hey, I've changed the um, pictures. Look, it's actually a, a 16Q20 I'm using, but these programs will work on um, an 0620 as well. So don't be concerned. In actual fact, the code I'm writing here would work on any PIC or AVR or LGT. So let me introduce myself. So my name is Evan Vem. I'm I'm the lead developer at GC Basic, and I'm taking you through these tutorials and videos. So important that you like the video, you subscribe to the channel, and you let the video run all the way through. So let me just uh, get straight into the the videos. So well, number five, we're actually going to use an input to set the state of the LEDs. Relatively simple. It's just introduced some more concepts about input. We've seen lots of outputs with LEDs and inputs in terms of ADCs, but now we're just going to see something that's either on or off. So what's the um, Q20? It's a PIC, 18F, lots of um, inputs and outputs. Um, it's got some other characteristics like an ADC, communication interfaces, pulse width modulation, and we're going to see all of that in the videos. And it comes in at the moment a 14 and a 20 pin product. So GC Basic is an um, open source compiler available and it supports these particular chips. Really simple. So what we're looking at some hardware. We'll look at the physical hardware in a moment. Um, it's a prototype board, it's powered at 5 volts, could be powered at 3 volts, 3.3 volts, but it's 5 at the moment. I'm using a programmer. Today, I'm using a PIC kit 3. Later on, I'll go to a PIC kit 4, shall I? Or maybe a clone. How about using a northern... Pro I could use any other programmer, so install. But today, PIC kit 3. Um, I have some an LED. Um, I really should write the word switch in here, I guess. In terms, there's a switch attached as well. And I'll show you that, and the potentiometer. And they're connected to the switches port A.3, ADC port A.0, and the LEDs are down at port C, 7, 6, 5, and 4. So let's look at that on desk cam, okay? So this is desk cam, as I've nicknamed it. So look, here is the Q20 here. It's attached um, through this programming cable here over to a, a picket 3, which is here um actually i'll zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole thing okay there you go look. Okay. you can see the whole thing and the back of my hand look. there you go um i think i could sort of play with that a little bit can i i don't know if i can no there you go um essentially what it does look i've got this back row of uh connectors here and i can connect in the 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 ports here two devices on this prototype port this was designed for me okay and so all i've done today is i've connected port a.3, which is here physically on the board, where, my pen, where that piece of wood is, to this output here. And then and that's connected through to a switch, which is down here. And we'll zoom back in. So it's connected up to a physical switch, and that switch is then has some resistors on it and other things to make it work. And I'll show you the circuit on that in a moment. Let me just zoom in a little bit, and then I'll just shuffle that along. You can just make out the connector here. It goes through a, a pull up or pull a pull up resistor to a switch. And when I push this switch here, we're going to get some action. Okay, at the moment there is no action because we're not. We, this is the program that was running in the previous video. So I'm going to push this button here, and it will do something. Back to the video. So what we're looking at is a switch connected to RA3 port. A.3. When the switch is depressed, it will transition to zero. So let's have a little zoom in on that to make sure we all understand that. So here we go. Um, this is, I'll put my pen on. This is where we are. We're connecting in here. And I've taken this port for a particular reason. Because next video, we're going to actually use the master clear. And this means it's blue. It means there's power on it. And it's... Um, it's a programming, one of the programming and debug ports. And in reality, this is actually the master reset that actually tells the chip it's going to be programmed. But we can use it as an input, and that's what we're going to do. So whenever we push the button, it will transition to zero. And how does it do that? Through this little circuit. 
there's a resistor and so this is the key switch we're looking at here when I push this switch here it will actually connect through to ground or zero volts meanwhile when it's not pushed it gets five, five volts gets pulled up through this 10k resistor and it gets pulled up so this port is pulled up normally so it's high so we can test whether it transitions between one state or another and that's essentially what an input is and so what we're going to do we're going to initialize the PCB or the chip in reality we're going to do that here we're going to set some LEDs off and then if the button has been if the buttons has been pressed we're going to test for that if it's been pressed it will toggle it else it will just loop around and do it again if it's been pressed it will loop around and do it again and so it's a very simple program but in reality we're going to stop it from bouncing as well we have a little routine that's going to bounce stop the bouncing so bouncing is when, it's, when the transition occurs at high speed and and your software might not detect it so I, there's a little routine that we've got that actually make sure that when you push the switch it's actually transitioned from one state to another and that's quite an important thing to have done so in the lab we're going to look at some gc studio options as well then we'll look at sample code and review the results so let me just go get started i'm going to press windows g g c s brings up gc studio as my option and in we go straight into gc studio seen this before but what we're going to do is have a quick look around to see what else we can do in here I'll just bring that into the middle so this is the current release of GC studio 1.1 1 1.0107 that's the version number this is the list of open files this is a folder and if I click near it it actually tells me the folder name let's go down the left hand side and go into the about in the about you can see there's quite a bit of information. It is a modules about the state of the compiler, the assemblies, and that might be useful when you have a, when you want to do some um, help. You know, when you have an issue, you just report that, and it really helps. There's some acknowledgement. There's the license. There's a readme. There's a full change log, so you can see what's happening. A roadmap and to report a bug. And this screen is extremely useful because it's got this key information in it. You can see that um, you can get directly to the GC Basic website, which we went to before, and other items. So I press OK, and that was the About. You can also do some other things in here, and we'll look at those later. If you find a bug, report it, click on that, donate to the project, please donate to the project. Open source software is not free. It costs money to publish this application and the tool chain. It costs real money, and it's not coming from my wallet, so we need funds, so we need donations. Currently, we're at about $650 a year, and that's ever just increasing monthly, okay? Things are not free for open source projects. So what we can also do in here, we can open a project or file, open a local folder, or create a new project. And they are useful methods to, to construct a project and manage your environment but today i'm just going to take the open recent is where we've been working it opens up the ide it takes a few seconds and now it's settled down and we can see that we've got a program called debounce and so yesterday we had oh, let me just do the yeah. classic search in here for GCB if I then apply that filter this is where we left it variable rotate 0 6 0 or number 60 we're going to 70 now debounce and I'll close everything else there we go control B to get rid of that folder window on the left so what have I got I'm going to minimize everything so that we can just focus on it. Now, if you want to actually collapse everything very quickly, by the way, watch this. Control A, press function key F2, and then type in the word fold. 
and in here you've got fold uh, fold or unfold i would imagine is in here as well okay all right and so if you say fold it will actually fold the application and you know, crunch it down and, and remove some, not remove the comments, but blank out particular areas. So we can then scan that nice and easily. Here are the comments at the top. This is what we're doing. Standard start here. Define the chip, option explicit. Now, I want to explain op option explicit today, so we'll do that in a moment. In here, we've got the hardware, which is the same layout we saw in the presentation, and I'm developing that as I'm going through so that you've got a trace of it. Let's minimize that. Define the constants, and you've seen the constants, they have not changed. But what I have added is in this new set of constants here, define switch. Define switch in on port A3. Set the direction of that as an input, and define a, a constant called down and it's quite important this because sometimes on your circuit you might find that the down value is actually zero and so if you toggle that i'll explain you'll see it work in a minute you can toggle that and set that to zero and it will still work for you if you have a pull up resistor on the switch it will do one thing if you have a pull down which is also valid then you just need to invert that, that constant so all we've got in here new is the um, switch in control set it to in and that constant for the down state let's get rid of those main program let's have a look what we've got we've got a do for loop a do for loop it waits 10 milliseconds um, and if the function key is pressed it's a function And if it's true, that means it equates to one, then it's going to set all these LEDs. I think what we'll do, we'll actually program it and see what happens. Now, I programmed it. Uh, we're going to see what happens, but then we're going to make we're going to make a new variable. And we're just going to see what happens when you don't declare variables. OK, and I'll show you that. Desk cam. Here we go. If I push the button on here and let it go. Nothing happens. Am I pushing the right button? Oh, there we go. It was hadn't finished programming. Sorry. There we go. I push it, click, it changes state, and all four are changing state, and I explain why in a moment. Okay, let's dive. Let's just uh, digress for a moment into what option explicit is all about. Well, option explicit means that you have to define your variables. And we, our variables are defined in this program inside a function called key pressed. And so here is the function itself. And what it's doing, it returns the state of that switch. And it's extremely simple. It has a couple of variables defined. And there is bits, look, bits. So that's taking, going to take one bit of a byte. So you can have eight of those. And, it, and GC Basic manages all the positions on all the bit values for you. So you don't have to worry. You just say, I want a bit, and it will give you a bit. And so we can set that to 0 or 1. So the range on a bit is 0 or 1, on or off. A byte is 0 to 255. So a bit saves a bit of memory. We have two, two variables in here, current last switch, or and... Um, Current, the current state of the switch and the last switch state. And it just, we use those two just to, to monitor what's going on. And it says here, is the, is, if the switch is down, that equates to port A dot A3. If it's down, then the current switch state is true. Else, because we're checking it often, if it's not pushed down, it will set it to false. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to make a typo, and I'm just going to put an X behind here. And you'll find if I try to compile that by pressing function key F6, I could select function key F4 or use the icon at the top right hand corner, which I'm going to do. It will actually pop up an error message for us. And I want to see that error message and show you that. Variable current switch state X not explicitly declared. Tells you the line number and the column. You can then click on that 
and it will take you to the error line. So if you have multiple errors, it will take you to there. If it's in a, what's called a system library, it will show you the system library. You ought to report those, but this is a user problem because you've made a typo. And because it's good practice to define your variables, it will ensure that you know that you've got your memory all managed. So if I put that back to what it should be and press that little hex icon, which is essentially assemble the program, compile it and assemble, it's done it successfully. So option explicit ensures that you declare your variables. Quite important practice. Let's keep going through. So if the switch is not down, it will set this to false. And then it says, if the, if the state has not changed, if the state has not changed, if the state has not changed, and then it obviously the function hasn't been pressed, it hasn't changed. And the opposite of that is, let's just set the current switch state to the last switch state and return the value of the current switch state. And that's if you have an inverted pull up or pull down, this still works because of that. Because if your if your down state is zero, it will return a one. And so you've got a little routine here that says if it's changed state and it's pushed down, return it as true. If it's not pressed or it hasn't changed state, then return false. Did I write this piece of code? No, I took this from a microchip program about 10 years ago. So let's just press function key F5. It will program it. We'll go out to desk cam and we'll see it flash as it programs. It's still programming. It's completed after five seconds. So the whole thing's done in five seconds. Now, if I push and release, push and release, and what we've got is no debounce because it has to go through the transitional state. So you could just say, port A, is it up or down? But what you're not doing is checking for debounce. So this routine function is a freebie. We give you the we give you that as a freebie because it's quite a useful routine to include to ensure that the button has been pressed. I say the button, I mean the switch. So we can minimize that piece of code there. And now we can say how it works. It says if the function key has been pressed, it's therefore equal to true with all the states that it's checking, then set all four LEDs. Toggle the LEDs. You could actually change the program so they're either on or off. It's, it's, how, it's just how you want to do it. Um, but you read it once and it does it. And it does it every 10 seconds and it's quite a simple program. And so what we've got, if we look at our PowerPoint, what we've got is this little circuit working quite well. We've got, we're testing RA3 and we're turning the LEDs on. As I said, this is a pull-up circuit. If you have a pull-down, you just invert the, the constant zero, the constant down to zero. So great. That's the end of this video. That's not a pretty short video. Tomorrow we'll be looking. The next video we'll be looking at using the reset switch to reset the microcontroller, but it also introduces other concepts as well. So enjoy.